ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackowitz, this is The Cage Review, and I'm going to review WWE NXT TakeOver War Games 2. And this is probably going to be a pretty short one, just because there were only four matches booked for this card. It wound up being five matches, and I'll get into that in a second. But, as usual, with NXT, the matches were just better than what you get from WWE performances, and it was very straightforward. Now, I do like when WWE puts in some promos and stuff, and there wasn't really any promos to this. There was one in-ring promo to start, and that was fine. But sometimes it is kind of nice to get a little bit more invested in characters, have a little bit more going on. Uh, this was very straightforward. Match, 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 match. But it was good. It was very good. The performances in the ring were excellent. Absolutely phenomenal. So to get into it, you start out and you have Matt Riddle, who is brand new to NXT, former UFC guy, um, mixed martial artist. He cuts a promo because during the pre-show, Cash Asono uh, kind of interrupted him when he was talking at the table and um, started making fun of his bro gimmick. And so Matt Riddle calls out Cassius Ono. They have a very quick match. Ono comes in, takes a knee to the face, gets pinned. Matt Riddle looks strong. And that's all it was. And then you go straight into Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler. And this is a match where uh, Shayna Baszler comes out with Jasmine Duke and Marina Shafir. And, of course, they're interfering and they cost um, Kyrie Sane the first bout. This is two out of three falls. Uh... Kyrie comes back, gets a second fall, and then at the end, Dakota Kai and um, Io Shirai come out to help out because, you know, to... <laughs> unfortunately, Kyrie is saying in this whole match was she was dealing with the outside interference from the two girls, and even when she was getting the upper hand, it was still such a pain in the ass for her. So it was, it was kind of a good story to tell. It kept the heel work up for Shayna Baszler. Uh, she eventually got the win, so she, you know, looked strong at the end because it was kind of fair at the end. Uh, you had two girls for uh, each opponent. And so, Shayna Baszler wins, and I really liked the match. It was good. I, I did, honestly, I think they did a really good job with it. So, the next match was honestly one of my favorites uh, that I've seen in a while. Um, it's very rare that you just get a match this damn good. Johnny Gargano takes on Aleister Black, and Aleister Black... For a guy his size, as tall as he is, as thick as he is, he can move like a cruiserweight. He, he's very agile. He can do a lot of crazy moves in the ring. And um, so it was, very sun, uh, it was very fun watching Johnny Gargano and Aleister Black going back and forth. They had some really, really good spots in the match. Eventually, uh, Aleister Black, he hits Black Max twice, and Johnny Gargano goes down. And then you get Velveteen Dream versus Tommaso Ciampa. Um, I didn't know how I felt about the setup of this match, uh, putting these two together, only because it's Velveteen Dream's got a very unique style, and uh, Tommaso Ciampa was just gold when it was with Gargano. But it worked out really well. I think I, uh, they had some really good spots in this match as well. One where um, uh, Velveteen Dream is on the uh, top rope, and... Champa's like laying half in the ring, half out of the ring, and Velveteen Dream's gonna drop an elbow to the outside, except Champa moves, and so literally Velveteen Dream winds up elbowing the floor, and uh, that just looked so painful. Um, and being that this was the War Games ring setup, there was that little metal strip in between the two rings to kind of have a little walkway there, and um. So Velveteen Dream gets DDT'd on that, and that's how Champa picks up the win. So, good match. Um, so far, honestly, you got three matches right there. All three are very good. And that brings you to War Games itself, which is Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, uh, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly, the Undisputed Era, and they're taking on the War Raiders, Hanson and Rowe, Pete Dunne, and Ricochet. And this had some really good spots in it, like just all the way through. I like the way they set this match up. It was paced very well, but it was also set up very well. There was a lot of things they did in the match that were just very, very cool. Um, of course, they have the typical, like, everybody in the match gets, you know, 
power bombed or suplexed onto the mat where everybody's down and Ricochet is on the top of the cage and instead of doing just like some kind of random dive off the top of the cage he does like a backwards 720 degree um, yeah I, I don't even know what you call it it's a backwards 720 that's what it was and it was cool it was absolutely spectacular to watch um, some very very good spots all the way through everybody had a moment where they looked strong Roderick Strong looked really good in this match um, I was just super impressed and honestly dude they worked uh, Ricochet's back all match like I felt so bad his neck and his upper back dude he needs the best chiropractor in the world after that match it was crazy and that was it uh, you get the win and Pete Dunn and Ricochet take out Adam Cole they both pin him at the same time. They kind of stand up, stare at each other. And then, like, everybody's just laid out and tired. Um, and honestly, man, Velveteen Dream and Tommaso Ciampa, man, that match. Like, Velveteen Dream, he didn't move for, like, five minutes after that match. He was literally in this weird, crumpled position and just did not move. Um, it, was, it was a good match, though. So, I mean, I give all these guys credit. And that was it, really. Um, you had, like I said, four basic matches, kind of added a fifth one. Every one of them was spectacular. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more promo work, considering you only had four matches, though. Um, you kind of expect war games to take a while, and I get that. Um, and it was booked good. I mean, I really liked the way it was set up. But if I had to nitpick, that would be my nitpick. But honestly, it was very strong. It was a very strong outing for NXT. I would still give it at least an 8.5 out of 10. I felt like everybody brought their A game as usual. And it, it showed, like, it really paid off in the end. So, I mean, yeah, I was really happy with it. And to be very honest, once again, I think WWE is going to be hard-pressed to put on the in-ring performance that these guys put on. I really do. Um... Now, there are things that I'm looking for tomorrow, and one of them is Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. If Brock Lesnar does more than just, you know, suplexing and Daniel Bryan gets some good spots, I think it will be an amazing match. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey, because Charlotte's very good in the ring. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's where I'm at. That's NXT. I thought it was... Really good. Like I said, at least an 8.5 out of 10, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jackowitz. Cage Nation, out.